forget about Dr. Wholesome is let's welcome Dr. Crazy, right? Okay. So now, right, this way. is Dr. Crazy. <laughs> And what I'm about to tell you, just like what I was sharing with your listeners, is that it's okay to be a little crazy. Welcome on the show, Dr. Gordon Chu. It's great to connect with you. Just before we get started into a conversation, I just want to do a quick introduction of, uh, of yourself, and then I'll, I'll pass you and give you the opportunity to tell our audience more about you know, what you're doing and come to where you are today. So I think you've got a really impressive uh, resume, if I could put it that way, an event creator, an entrepreneur, your private academic coach, an educator, public speaker, a lecturer, a corporate advisor, a husband, and a father. Definitely a gentleman that wears many different hats and have been very successful in, in, in the past, you know, 20, 30 years or so. I read somewhere that you've got about 32 patents under your belt. You've developed this academy called Doc, sorry, Dr. Wholesome, mm. yeah? And it was born after the birth of your two daughters, right? So mm. really interested to hear, you know, your existential journey, you know, what made you who you are today. But also, I, you know, I, I think it's a right time to pass to you and maybe you can tell the audience a bit more about yourself, you know, and how you become where you are today. Well, telling you about myself, I mean, there's a lot of videos out there that have different interviews. So, so I'll give you a different flavor, try to make it a little different. I decided to reassess my priorities as you described, and I had this extensive paper trail, right, of, of abilities. And if you started dicing up different countries of how my, my patents that you mentioned 31, 32, they usually grant them and then different countries follow through. So if you sorted them by country, then that number would, would jump up. You could add zeros. Right, add zeros to the end of things. And, you know, we as humans are very fascinated by zeros, you know, zero by itself, not so much. So zero, 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 not so interesting, but one, zero, 10, one, zero, zero, that's a hundred, one, zero, 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 a thousand. And we get fascinated by collecting these increases, but I decided to reassess my priorities to refocus on, 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 on how can I choose the deals that don't just make monetary gain, but actually lead to friendships, long-term friendships, or how do I share an idea on, an, on a test, but then use that to change someone's trajectory in life, as opposed to, let me just score on the test. So the difference between a scholar versus a, a good test taker or a high scorer, is not what we all want, right? Because what kind of limited constraints do we have or constraints in general? What do we have? We have one planet. We have all of us as stakeholders in that one planet. So how do I use my remaining time left to change that, right? I didn't start off just coming up with the concept of Dr. Wholesome's Academy um, for my children. I've been tutoring and coaching kids for 32, 33 years. But my former self was, let's just help you get the score because that's what parents want. And then I would get them near perfect scores. But that didn't mean that they were good people. So self-criticizing, having a long list of patents and accomplishments doesn't mean that I would leave a good obituary. Having a great resume doesn't mean you have a good obituary. So start thinking about the consequences of what we do. That kind of hit me. And a lot like you, Aaron, they found that to be intriguing. So rip your life apart, right? You know, and then gets you a second TED Talk. First TED Talk was on graphene, right? The new material that would get us off the planet or build new materials. You know, I want to theme up our interview today with an idea is that we left the stone age not because we ran out of stones plenty of stones around us why did we leave the stone age so that we could do better we could have better materials the iron age the steel age plastic age maybe not so good about that and then the silicon age right the rise of silicon valley and the ai age of ai and age is not just some fad it is a prolonged period where we human beings start 
utilizing things that we discover and come up with new things. But also there was the age of the coronavirus, right? Not necessarily an age, but a period, or maybe it can be an age. It's too early to tell. So when I think about how do I teach my children best way to live their life, it's by example. If I am not willing to make them my core, then when I try to tell them to do something, there's certain pushback, right? Pushback. And maybe the pushback is some people may qualify that as a teenage reaction. But if I look at it differently is this is nature versus nurture is that nature is telling me that I'm not doing the homework in order to protect you species, human species, so that I, I don't become a robot somewhere. Oh, that's interesting because that, that can get you a book like rich dad, poor dad, right? You know, live your own life and do those kinds of things and not care about corporate so much. Right? So who's right? What's right. And it was in that journey that I said, well, I don't know what's right, but I do know that I'm an American born Chinese who's illiterate and cannot read or write. And that's the consequences of growing up in this country and, and the United States of America. But maybe if I've married a wonderful woman and, and if she wants to, and she can coach my kids, then maybe they don't have to grow up to be my, like me. So one of the daddy moments was we're at the karaoke place. Right. And, and I said to them, you know, all those songs, mom sing, I can't sing for you. Can't, no, I cannot sing for you. And you admit that, that to your kids when they're two years old, right? And then they start talking and she says, my youngest one says, yeah, you can't sing for us. I said, yeah. And you have a choice. I said, to be like me or to be like mom, right? So choose, right? Not for any test, right? But to have options in life, right? And what kind of options do we want? Well, what about work optional, right? Do we have to go into a job, right? Or can we be work optional? If so-and-so isn't nice to us, just because they give us a raise doesn't necessarily mean we'll stay because it's really not about the money at the end of the day. It's about the, a lot of other intangibles that make us who we are. I think that we're starting to realize that. And so telling you about me, right? And, you know, there's the interviews that have happened in the past and all those interviews that will happen in the future. But I wanted to give you a different version of it is because you wrote the book about being a dad, right? Being a dad and how much your family matters to you. Well, that's so essential. It defines, it's the defining moment that there have been songs I've written about this, right? I'll bring up one example, right? If, if people haven't seen this is Ed Sheeran's perfect, right? And it goes like this. I found a love for me darling just dive right in and follow my lead right it goes like that and and you say wow you know you know how hard it is to find a cantonese speaking literate woman to love me because i can't read or write well that's hard statistically that's hard like why would you want to go with a a, a, a deaf or dumb, right? So, so that's me, right? And, and then when you find that person, what kind of environment you want to do? Oh, no, I want to go and work every day until you grow old and miss all those moments with you. Is that really what you want to do? Right? So if you're feeling that, then you're feeling how I felt. And I said, you know what? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell everything and I'm going to start all over again. 32 patents. By the way, those patents kept getting granted, right? As I left and they more and more get granted and it's still getting granted now. So maybe I'll end up with 64, right? By the time, you know, another interview happens, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it really is about how can I maximize the time once I found a love for me, right? Then I just dive, right? I asked her to dive right in and follow my lead. So where is my accountability when it comes to that, right? So I'll stop there and let you ask more questions. <laughs>
Well, I've got to say that was a very powerful introduction there, Doctor. Oh, you mentioned about ripping yourself up, mm. right? I wanted to ask you, mm. when was your aha moment? Was it right after your daughters were born? Oh, so it was, it was like, you know, your first vaccination. Definitely some people feel it, other people don't feel it. But then my second injection, my second daughter, oh boy, did I feel, I fought it initially. I brought my first daughter to 11 countries. Yeah, her passport was stamped. Before she was one, she went to 11 countries. She has been to Israel. She's been to Malaysia, Indonesia, Hong Kong, Singapore, living from hotel to hotel. Isn't that amazing? Sounds great. But now I think she's now 10 years old. She's really, right now she's seven, but imagine if she was 10 and daddy kept doing that. If I did that, what would happen? She would have, she wouldn't have a, her a focus because the story would still be about me and how I was selfish and brought them along. And then it just keeps going on about me. And then suddenly I die. We all die. We all don't know the time of the day we will die. The accident will, will be, or no accident, whatever it may be. Some people get to die in their sleep, but then I suddenly go. And now the story, and the camera lens focuses onto her, my oldest one, and then her sister, who's 18 months younger, and it focuses onto them. And then my wife, who followed my lead, right? Followed my lead, just like Ed Sheeran's perfect song. And now the song isn't perfect anymore. The story is imperfect because I dragged them along in that glory. So that second hit, was in 2016 when my second daughter was born. I was thinking like, if I die, what rights do they have as Asians with a husband who's an Asian inventor? What would happen if there was some kind of tension? What would happen? Well, I'm not there to be around to fight for them, to fend for them. Yeah. And then the lyrics came, you know, that, well, I found a woman stronger than anyone i know she's strong she shares my dreams i hope that someday i'll share her home oh home. so if i'm going to share her home don't i have to make that home for her don't i have to be there and create that ecosystem so i'm too selfish to sell everything really no i'm not going to do that i'm going to sell everything all right and you can have it all Right. And that's how I recreated this because DWA, Dr. Holston's Academy, didn't exist. It wasn't that story and it wasn't a pivot. It, it, it was an epiphany. I needed to transcend because I'm at the top of the mountain here. I don't want to be on that mountain. I want to be on this mountain because she gave me a promise that she would be with me for the rest of her life. And I gave her a promise. I would take care of them. I'm not taking care of them. I was taking care of myself if I suddenly died. So I then sold everything and went into different areas. Friends were shocked. You know, you take that salary, right? She was shocked. I'm <laughs> saying like, right. And I said, we may not come back out of this the same, right? but we'll come out of this Did better. you lose any friends hmm? over that transition? Oh, Did you lose, lose any, any friends? friends? No, that? I shocked the ones, the, the one, no, let's qualify friends, right? Really close people who, you know, you're able to talk about anything. That's how I would define friends, right? And no, I didn't lose them. We, we became substantially closer. I gained because I gave. So there was no loss. There was increase of dimension. There was a stasis of the former self, that version. And then it was a blossoming of a completely different environment. And I would ask my wife, you know, how come you never like questioned when we first dated, never question anything. You just followed my lead, right? Really followed my lead. It's, this is such a perfect song. Perfect for how to describe her. But then when I went in and got rid of everything, did that scare you? And she said, yes, it definitely did.
it was very scary because you read about men who go through midlife crises, things like that, right? Yeah, usually it doesn't, it's not a good story, right? Um, mm -hmm. But I was looking at it from a perspective of um, a scientist. And I started looking at it as if I died, they're out in the street, you know, they lose everything. They no longer have someone who's a creator who can think and invent. So, you know, then what do you do? It's downhill from there, right? You cash out everything. So we might as well do that now while I'm still alive to watch it happen. I want to see it totally unfold and then restructure. So I went into commercial real estate, some interviews that talk about that. I also went into teaching. So in the morning I would teach at night, I would look at the commercial real estate. And then I would also look at things that would be trending like AI, artificial intelligence. And so I became a student again. And, and then looking at why collaborations and cultures and things fail, how do you get system failure? Well, when we don't understand each other, right? When we start having, you know, you look at something like a big company, we use something like Nokia, right? You know, that, that dominated the world, but because they didn't look at change. And they looked at it only as pure exploitation. Let me just keep on selling these phones to these people. Cheaper. I want to create the cheapest phone possible, but the world didn't want the cheapest phone. They wanted a functional phone. And so suddenly Nokia lost all their market share in that year, that, that critical moment, that collision event, right? So that when you have that collision event, that's when you really get tested, right? You get really tested. And Kodak had that moment. So the question is, do you need to go through a heart attack before you actually learn your lesson? And sometimes when you get the heart attack, you don't. Here's a statistic is that the majority of S&P 500 companies do not stay listed on the S&P 500 beyond the average lifespan of a human being. Hmm. So, uh -huh. so they get kicked out. Maneu maneuvered around, get delisted, whatever it may be, you don't exist on that exchange longer than the lifespan of human being. So there's a lot of um, collisions, a lot of things that happen. And then there was the theory that if we keep giving people raises, that they'll just stay and you'll have retention of your top individuals, but that's not true either. And another example is what about the son of an emperor or a king who decides this isn't what I want to do? What are you, are you crazy? You're going to throw away, right? Your royalty, but then they see it completely from a different lens. So we can do that any time. It's really, truly optional. Change your lens, right? I'm not asking you to be unsuccessful, I'm trying to look at a lens of an obituary as opposed to a lens of a resume. And when you can do that, then you can have di different deep realizations. So instead of a weak decision maker, you become a deep decision maker. And it's not spoiling your children. It's really letting them see it from a third person is that if you can do that, then you can survive and then you can learn to thrive and you can start focusing on what's important. So that's the, that was the driving force is that on every level, it was the right decision, right? And if I'm truly an entrepreneur, then I can, you know, I can do that, right? I've done it so many different times before. So definition of entrepreneurs turn anything into a working business. So I went in there and I did that. And lo and behold, right, you now see what happened today. Now, different friends, you were asking me about friendships. One friend um, who is in Hong Kong asked me to work with them on, on my natural side of food and, and, and sustenance. Her, her name is Vindi Chan, Tan Wai Yi, right? So, so when I did that, I, you know, started talking about health and then, but because I already made all that change. I then said, you know, if I'm going to do this, forget about Dr. Wholesome is 
let's t- welcome Dr. Crazy, right? Okay. So now, right, this way. is Dr. Crazy. <laughs> and what I'm about to tell you, just like what I was t- sharing with your listeners, is that it's okay to be a little crazy. All right. It's important to be a little crazy because of this other, this other song, right? This song was, was, uh, was sang by Patsy Cline, right? I'm going to pull up the lyrics right here. Go for it. Right. And it says, crazy, I'm crazy for feeling so lonely, right? So crazy, I'm crazy for feeling so lonely, crazy for feeling so blue. Now, how that moment occurred was I said, I'm going to convince myself that I, we're going to answer questions about your health and various things, but you really don't need me. You don't need me. You have plenty of experts in Hong Kong, really, right? You know, so, so you know, you're just going to leave me one day for another expert, or you're going to leave me one day for just for leaving me because you're health, you're healthy now. And the more I could get my mindset into that, that it didn't matter, the more it could be fun. And by doing that, you know what they thought? People thought that the government was shutting us down, right? Because like, if you do something like this, that must mean that, you know, you know, for liability purposes or something, no, it wasn't about that. And so the timing is perfect. The fact that you wanted to interview my choices and decisions, it was like, yeah, just be who you want to be for self-discovery, right? Let go of the ego. Stop thinking about it being you because it's not about me. It's about them, about your viewers, right? And, and maybe I made it a little crazy and interesting. I don't know what's going to happen to your views now, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's great. I'm really enjoying this. It's very okay. different. And yeah. I, I like how you're putting it. And there's so many points that I picked up along the way. Mm. And I, there's so many questions I want to ask you, but I'm just trying to figure out where to start. Okay. <laughs>